Aries with Matrix, and you'd like to describe what you're up to. Uh, you know the routine now. I think you've seen some. Yeah, of it. yeah. I've been here a couple of years now. So. Okay, all right. So yeah, thanks a lot for <laughs> taking me. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's an honor to be here. So um, you know, uh, I've been here a couple of times, but uh, Matrix just to spend maybe a minute talking sure, about what please. we do recently. We just recently closed our second fund. Uh, the first one was in 2008. So we just um, spent using roughly three years to 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 spend. You know, uh, all the money, not all the money, but we invest in 30 companies that we have in our first fund. Recently, just closed our second fund uh, of the size of roughly a little bit less than $400 million US. Um, so we started investing out of the second fund right now. Okay. Our, our focus is still very much TMT, early stage driven, um, and, and we particularly like um, three sectors internet, mobile, e commerce. We also spend some time on, on, on clean tech, healthcare, and the other, other sectors, but uh, we still try to stay very focused when everybody's trying to diversify and invest right. in uh, you know, pretty much any space. And do you have any reaction to what, what Hans was saying? Because it's most germane to, to your area in terms of his comments. Would you, would you concur with? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think um, I, I will agree to a lot of what, what Hans just mentioned, uh, especially to um, two, two key points that we're seeing, the main trend that is evolving in, in our industry for the past two years. Uh, first of all, more and more, I would say, repeat entrepreneurs right. uh, are coming out from the industry. Um, they are from Baidu, Taobao, you know, um, maybe uh, Tencent and the like. They all have been uh, very experienced. They might have like 10 years experience working with Baidu or, or Tencent. They have lead, you know, revenue size of maybe couple, 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 you know, 50 million dollar US or plus with a team of, you know, a thousand people. So now they are coming out to own their own company. So this is actually creating a very good, um, I would say, uh, um, I would say ecosystems for us. More and more of these uh, repeat entrepreneurs are coming out, although they are not true repeats because right. they have not done a thing themselves. on their own, but right. they have actually lead quite some significant projects before. Um, second point is, um, you know, things are getting quite expensive this year. Um, you know, I, I don't know whether it's like two to three times, but at least from the early stage that we're doing, um, you know, deals used to be maybe ranges in around a million to maybe five in the typical Series A's in China. Now, a lot of Series A's in China starts with five million dollar checks or all the way up to 10 million for A rounds. So uh, things have been changing. We're raising a bigger fund, but it feels like a smaller fund. Um, then the big question is, do you want to keep your powder dry? I mean, obviously, you raise the money. Um, they obviously, have obligations to invest. But is there a sense of, of waiting might, might be the right strategy? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, uh, it's a trade-off, right? I mean, uh, waiting, you're, you're just expecting you know, the bubble will burst, you know, that the share price will go down, IPO will stop, or window will close. Uh, but you know, ultimately, from, from us, I think we should invest in no matter it's a good time or a bad time. Uh, as long as there's good entrepreneurs that comes out, uh, we're backing for the wrong one, and, and no, we're not flipping stocks. We're not doing you know, two years, especially we're doing A rounds. Yeah. So chances of these people coming out they, they might be here today, but they might not be available next year. So if we see good people, we'll, we'll, we'll try to control, of course, on valuations. But if we see good people, we'll try to capture as many as we can. I see. And the super angel phenomenon, we, we, Hans was addressing as well. How do you see, see that? that work? Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, especially we're doing an early stage investment. It's, it's, uh, it's interfinding a lot with the, the things that we do. Uh, angels, a couple of years back then, people do less than a million US. But I see a lot of angels are investing a million or even two million US now. So as a result, you know, Series A's are becoming bigger rounds as well. So, um, you know, strategy on our side, we just have to go even more earlier than they do. Um, historically, we, we do A rounds. Now, we actually sometimes compete with angels. Right. We have a small pool that we invest in early stage companies, companies that are only founded by two people with a business plan and not much. Uh, typically, within the Series A, a US dollar fund will not make such investments. But now, uh, we see the trend that if these guys got captured by the super angels. <laughs> Rounds coming out will be, you know, 30, 50 million dollar post US dollars. So rather than, you know, chasing after those A rounds, I would just go a little bit deeper into the angels and see and invest in select a number of people that we like a lot, uh, but it might be premature for A rounds, but we'll just, just ride with them uh, a little bit earlier on. Clearly, we need new definitions because it's, everything's overlapping now. So it's, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> And in terms of, uh, you described, you know, there are these experienced seasoned, uh, I say not entrepreneurs, but they're, they're, uh, they're entrepreneurs who come from established corporate backgrounds in, in uh, startups. Some of them have been there from the beginning at Alibaba or, you know, Baidu. 
How do you, um, are there any particular uh, uh, style of the people coming from different companies that you find? I mean, we look at online video, most of the people in the online video a lot came from, from Sohu, for example, so that's, that's where a lot of the competence has come from. Is differences in style because they've worked in very different kind of companies? Uh, um, <coughs> There is, but, but ultimately, I think, again, things are all emerging together yeah. as one pool. Um, what, what I'm seeing more and more so of the trend is, uh, myself actually spent a lot of time mo focusing on mobile technology. So we, we invest in mobile applications, mobile advertising, you know, gaming, mobile gaming, and the like. Uh, when we're talking about mobile, a couple of years back then, uh, a lot of these entrepreneurs, they were true mobile uh, yeah. players. They were either with SP or they were, have been you know, working in that industry for a couple of years. But for the last 12 months, I've been seeing more and more of the very successful internet you know, employees that came out from Baidu, came out from uh, you know, QQ, that they don't have any mobile experience, but right. now they're going to start their own venture doing mobile now in China because it's, you know, one, one is because it's very hot, the other is because that they see that they've been through the path in the internet space now, and then they think that they can you know, use the experience to capture what has been the uptake coming of the mobile internet space. And if we look at the other end of the scale, the, you know, the ex existing established players, the big three, let's say, you know, uh, Baidu and Taobao and Tencent, mm -hmm. one could argue that uh, Weibo, Sina now in terms of social. I mean, do you see a risk of these companies being so dominant in their sectors that it's going to make it very difficult? Uh, we've had this talk about it, Tencent. <laughs> I mean, or, or do you think that's, that yeah. technology changes everything? It is and it is not. I mean, the, the, the thing is, the good thing is they're all getting bigger, but on the other hand is they're all opening up. So, I mean, this year a lot of people are talking is, is a year of openness. So, so uh, you know, the Xinhua Weibo, Tencent, Baidu, everyone is trying to open their own platform for, for other people to plug in. So, I mean, whether or not you want to compete head to head with them, it's a different story now. Now you can actually resize pretty comfortably living in the ecosystem and, and try to live uh, right out of it and pr create a pretty, I would say, a pretty successful company. I mean, not that a lot of people have done that so far, but we have seen that this trend can actually happen and sustain. You know, Facebook is successful, but residing on that, I've seen Senga, I've seen Bado, I've seen more and more of these plugins into bigger platforms can become multi-billion dollar companies, not to mention only an IPO company. So uh, these platforms are actually creating more opportunities for, for people to reside. Uh, you, I mean, if you ask me again whether or not I want to create another or support a venture that would create another ecosystem, another social network, maybe not, but whether or not I would, I would back a company that would reside in one of these and become very successful, there, there are chances. And what are the implications of that for M&A, for example, I mean, if, if people are just going to be able to be partnering, I mean, typically one can say there's been a lot more M&A in Silicon Valley and the psychology, it, it's just much more established. I mean, when you're looking at your portfolio companies, are you thinking out three, five years that M&A is going to be a big part of that or is it still uh, that these are going to be listing uh, based on, say, their ability to partnership, as you described? I, I, I guess the, you know, the, the, the dream, the goal for all venture-backed companies is to right. become an IPO company, sure. but um, the, the trend is that you, you've been seeing more and more M&As happening, uh, especially that, you know, aggregated amount or the number of listed companies in China and the U.S. has been way over 100 now. So the, each every one of them are actually competing on growth. Right. Uh, Tencent has been making a lot of investments, M&As, Baidu, you know, uh, uh, Taobao as well, Alibaba. So um, more and more of these transactions are happening. Mm -hmm. So there's actually beneficial for us as an investor because we see that, uh, you know, IPO is not the only choice, but uh, I mean, it, it, in, in any case, if, if you fit into a certain area, uh, you could actually become a very good candidate to be acquired by one of these listed companies. Right, good. I have to rudely check my watches here. I think we're still open. Um, and so uh, in terms of the mobile world, I mean, as you described, nobody's really dominated it, right, in terms of the existing players. So do, do you have any gut feel as to um, those who are in the best position, if you're talking about a Tencent or a Baidu, for example, and, and where are the niche opportunities that you still see? Yep. Um, yeah, I, I think um, if you want to talk about, you know, any dominancy in the, in the space, uh, QQ might be the only one that we see some, from a certain standpoint they are. But ultimately from, from my perspective, we're we're actually spending a lot of time investing in mobile portfolios. We've about, about we've got about fifteen invested companies just in the mobile space right now. So uh, the the way that we see that is you know the, the changes in the trend are actually happening so fast. Uh, last year people would be talking about Symbian and now people will just think 
oh, you're still doing a Symbian application? You know, why? <laughs> so, I mean, all these changes in, in, in technology and platforms, the, the, the up and rising of iPhones and now iPads, are actually creating a lot more new opportunities for newcomers to come in. Uh, I've got people constantly asking us that, well, who will you see will be the biggest one in the mobile space? Whether it will be one of the existing players moving into the space, or will that be any of the new players? I think, you know, if, if, you, if you stem from a standpoint, uh, you know, the, the future Baidu or, or QQ in the mobile space might have not even formed right. or, or, or created. They might be just a, a, a venture in the, in, the, in the garage for now. So, so, you know, with this constantly changing uh, technology environment, people can come and up, uptake the entire space really fast with just one technology. Yeah, I think also uh, you mentioned the iPhone and the iPad. and. Uh, I'm an investor in a, in a startup, well, it's more than a startup now, but it basically tapping into the, uh, the app store, the globalization, it's a you know, Chinese-based firm, but it's, it's suddenly got this global playing field. And um, are you seeing really attractive companies here in that, in that sector? Yeah, I, I wouldn't say that there are many attractive there companies, many, but right? yeah. going back from, from to answer that question, I do see that a um, couple of years back then, if you asked me whether or not I would believe in a local company running an international market, I would not believe in that. Right. But because of the, 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 the app store and the iPhone that is creating a pretty level playing field for everyone because you've got one consistent market, you've got one consistent advertising channel and strategy. Um, nowadays, Chinese companies, if you want to capture the global market, is a lot more easier. Uh, within our portfolio, we've actually got a couple local companies in Chengdu, Shanghai, and other places that they are doing very well, yeah. uh, doing iPhone applications, but selling to 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 yeah. to uh, you know the, all the rest of the world. They don't even have. Any revenues from China? That's but right. They're they very profitable. Yeah. They could be very profitable. Yeah. No, I think it's uh, there's hope for those. Uh, you know, you mentioned the SPs and those who, of us who went through the SP wars and so on. There's a lot of, you know, kind of grizzled veterans from that. You know, you were so dependent on the good graces of a China Mobile or whatever. And uh, and China Mobile's changing too now. They has to, the whole industry is changing. But it's interesting. There is a, I hope, hopefully, redemption through the app stores. It's quite an interesting phenomenon. Well, great. I think uh, I think we're. Uh, um, Running out of time, so I'd like to thank you very, very much. There are no questions on the floor, but check your Weibo and see what's All going right. on. Thanks okay. a lot for coming. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Okay.